time for a fair, but this one's far from frivolous. It's Iran's defense exhibition on all things military and domestically made. It was held on 19th November and was followed by a military maneuver two days later in Kerman. From drones to missiles, the country's defense capabilities were sampled for display. It was a show of independence and the ability to secure the country's safety and maintain balance regionally and internationally. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Iran Today. That's right, it's a long time Iran doesn't need to import the bulk of its needed military commodities. It is 90% independent. This is Ali Abdi, an Iranian political analyst. Currently, we find ourselves in a situation where we produce our armaments independently, surpassing mere discussions of overhaul or maintenance. Presently, the production lies within our capabilities. Within the aerospace forces, especially the Revolutionary Guards, 100% of the productions are indigenous. In the ground forces, over 90% of the equipment is domestically manufactured. In the naval forces, Iran stands among the few countries in the world producing seafaring vessels. The latest news we have in the unveiling of the Deylaman combat vessel, scheduled for November 28, following Jamaran, Damovand and other vessels we have had. In the Western Asia region, we stand alone in producing maritime vessels. We are the sole country in this region producing various missile types. We proudly boast 100% indigenous drone production. In terms of military production and indigenous military industries in Western Asia, practically we have few equals. That's a long way from where it was just decades ago, when it even needed to import barbed wire, barbed wire which it was denied. In fact, it was during the imposed eight-year Iraq-Iran War of the 80s, what is known in Iran as the Holy Defense, that the Western and Eastern blocs united for the first time since the Cold War against what they assumed as a common enemy, Iran. Mr. Ali Abdi told us about Iran's situation before the establishment of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Prior to the revolution, we were mere consumers mainly procuring various armaments from the US or other powers like UK, primarily from the Western Bloc. We had minimal dealings with the Eastern Bloc except for a few vehicles like Jeeps. Our Air Force had 100% dependency on Western resources. Even the overhauls were conducted by American technicians. The Navy followed a similar path. The most significant tank we possessed, the Chieftain tank, wasn't suitable for Iran or our region. Admittedly, its procurement was a mistake according to experts. It wasn't fitting for our country. In a sense, we were solely consumers. As per the sales protocols, we had no right to modify or overhaul these items. If given permission, American or European technicians had to be present and oversee. Primarily, it was due to Iran's lack of manufacturing capabilities. Foreign meddling and deal-breaking, which has put Iran on guard, began centuries ago. An example as recent as the 1950s is what has been termed the 1953 coup d'etat, whereby America and Britain had a hand in toppling the democratically elected government of Prime Minister Mossadegh. After the revolution came the eight-year war and sanctions. Sanctions extended to this day, while America and allies continue to establish military strongholds in West Asia and dispatch forces and state-of-the-art military equipment to it. And so defense capability, and more specifically deterrent defense capability, is a matter of basic survival to Iran. This is Dr. Abolfas Bozargan. He's a graduate of international relations from Tehran University. We asked him about the significance of the fair. Why is it important? It's crucial because for over 40 years we have faced armed sanctions. None of the military powers sell their equipment to our country, especially in which region. 
The tumultuous region known to the Western world as the Middle East, where our neighbors include Turkey, a NATO member, and Saudi Arabia, the world's largest arms importer and buyer. We exist in a region where both our Western and Eastern sides are in constant turmoil and terrorism growth. We have the presence of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. We have had numerous wars in our region, direct presence and military campaigns by the United States in the past 20 years at our borders in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Persian Gulf. U.S. aircraft carriers, B-52s, and nuclear submarines are present in our region. When weapons aren't sold to you, like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, or Turkey, where you can't buy F-35, F-32, or Russian S-400 systems, or various armaments that neighboring countries are constantly purchasing. What should we do? Defend ourselves with our own hands? We must build it ourselves. Among some achievements on display at the defense exhibition was a new missile, the Fatah-2 hypersonic missile, which is super ultrasonic with glide and cruise capabilities. It is classed as HGV and HCM armaments. Only four countries have such hypersonic weapons, one of them being Iran. To know more, we talk to Mr. Mohammad Shaltuki, an Iranian security and defense researcher. The hypersonic cruise missile Fatah II is the newest missile achievement of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and only four countries in the world possess this technology operationally, Iran being one of them. This missile operates at extremely high speeds, and its specific purpose is to render the enemy's air defense ineffective. In the event of a potential conflict, this missile will initiate the first wave of attacks, neutralizing the enemy's air defense systems. We can derive the mission of this missile from its name, Fatah, meaning opener or uncloser. In a sense, the Fatah missile serves as an opener for other missiles, making it easier for them to reach their targets. In the defensive warfare section, systems for response to micro flyers or winged microchips were displayed, as well as missile systems with a range of 20 to 320 kilometers. The Mehran mobile defense system was on display. It is capable of engaging a variety of aerial targets at a range of 320 kilometers. It is a teller system and its radar, missile, and command posts are mounted on an auto vehicle. Each system is equipped with four Mehran 1 missiles. We asked Mr. Shaltuki about the distinguishing features of Mehran mobile defense system. In the realm of defense, we witnessed the unveiling of a new air defense system named Mehran. Mehran is a long-range air defense system with a key feature of mobility. The enemy can never target this system because once it fires, it swiftly changes positions. This capability of maneuverability and mobility is the primary feature of the Mehran system with a range of 320 kilometers. It can target enemy aircraft like IRIX, fuel-carrying aircraft and strategic bombers like the American B-1 and B-2 bombers. The Shahed 147 drone or UAV that is unmanned aerial vehicle was another highlight of the day. It is a wide-body plane with a wing length of 26 meters and can fly at 60,000 feet and detect objects and entities at a distance of 1,000 kilometers. It is the latest UAV achievement of the IRGC Aerospace Force. Another drone on display was the Shahed 139. In the domain of drones, we witnessed the introduction of two new models from the drone family Shahed in these exhibitions. Shahed 139 and Shahed 147 were showcased, with Shahed 147 being a considerably large and extraordinary drone presented. This aircraft can fly up to an altitude of 60,000 feet and can ascend to an altitude of 30 kilometers. Additionally, it possesses a significantly high endurance for continuous flight, remaining in the sky for hours, even consecutively for two to three days, conducting reconnaissance and information gathering operations. The exhibition was to display achievements of the Aerospace Force of the IRGC or the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. 
All the latest or upgraded creations by the IRGC's young aerospace scientists were exhibited under the name From Ideas to All Iranian Products. Another section of the exhibition displayed the latest measures and advancements in satellite carrying missiles and sending satellites into space. This is Mehdi Bakhtiari of Tasnim News Agency. He told us about the importance of the IRGCAF. The Aerospace Force of the Revolutionary Guards can almost be considered a strategic force because in Iran's military doctrine, two crucial arms are considered, drones and missiles. Both of these are the most critical areas of work for the Aerospace Force. Ballistic missiles, especially long-range ones, are fully under the control of the Aerospace Force of the Guards, while drones are primarily within their purview. Drones have a broader spectrum of views and other forces also utilize them. But the major portion of Iran's defensive doctrine is vested in the aerospace force of the guards, making this exhibition extremely significant in that regard. The exhibition was attended by the commander of all forces Ayatollah Khamenei. He didn't leave without a comment as he marveled at the displays. Also demonstrated to him was the upgraded system 9-day. He said, what's most important is needs assessment and scientific focus and research on those needs. Ultimately, it is motivation stemming from belief that makes scientific achievements possible. Our present victories must not make us complacent, however, because military and non-military sectors elsewhere in the world are constantly moving forward. Mr. Shaltuki told us about the significance of Ayatollah Khamenei's visit to the fair. With his presence, the leader highlights the importance of this force and its ensemble primarily to everyone. Secondly, the international and external message conveyed by His Excellency's visit to the exhibition showcases the high level of readiness through the facilities and equipment displayed. When the leader visits such an ensemble and inspects the facilities created by their children of the nation, an essential point emerges. His Excellency's stance and statements in the future and what they communicate beyond Iran's borders signify a tangible power he observed during his visit. He witnessed commendable equipment displayed for the first time in this exhibition. Given the geostrategic sensitivity of Iran's location and position, you can see why defense capabilities matter so much. And when we say that Iran's military doctrine is preemptive self-defense, we mean exactly that, because the Islamic Republic is committed to all universal human ethical values. Geostrategic concerns generally decide a country's military strategy. Powers, especially secular hegemonic powers, continue to pursue empire by dividing to rule. They root for the independence of provinces and portions of countries by provoking a sense of separate identity or singular hardship. To do so, they have pursued long-term plans of planting traitorous governments in set countries or by starting proxy wars or even by planting proxy regimes such as Israel to help in running regions for them. The West and NATO, it would appear, destroy the fundamentals of arms control and are involved in heightened cyber crimes, bioterrorism, fundamentalism and ecosystem challenges, among others. An obvious example of how they bring independent countries to their knees is imposing sanctions on them. Mr. Bakhtiari believes that you cannot be weak and expect peace around you. When you intend to establish peace and seek it, you naturally need to be powerful. If you lack power, you cannot establish peace or protect the peace process. You need to be powerful. Therefore, Iran decided, first and foremost, to become powerful enough to defend its interests, at the very least. Besides, it didn't stop there. It fostered its allies in the region, including Hezbollah and Sarallah in Yemen or in Iraq and Syria. These were indeed regions where we witnessed significant events in recent years. 
The Middle East and these countries were among the most populated areas in the world. There were wars in Syria, in Iraq, conflicts in Yemen. All of these stabilizes when you are powerful enough to defend yourself and establish that peace. There's plenty more right after a quick glance at some news excerpts. Hello everyone and welcome back to news excerpts from all across the world. Now we start with a piece of news from Iran. Iran unveils upgraded hypersonic missile as Ayatollah Khamenei touts Israel failure. Al Jazeera writes, the Iranian show of force comes amid heightened U.S. military presence in the region after Israel began bombing Gaza. Now another item, Iran unveils advanced ballistic missile with hypersonic glide vehicle warhead. Defense and Security Middle East writes, in a significant technological leap, the Islamic Revolution Guard's core aerospace force unveiled the latest version of the Fatah ballistic missile designated as Fatah II. This advanced missile is equipped with a hypersonic vehicle warhead, making it a formidable addition to Iran's military arsenal. Now, fourth country with hypersonic tech expert calls Iran's Fatah II as uninterceptable cruise missile ideal for preemptive strikes. The Eurasian Times writes months after it stunned the world by unveiling its first ever hypersonic missile, Fatah, Iran showed off an improved variant codenamed Fatah II in a military display on November the 19th. Iran is ready with Israeli hitting missiles, IRGC says. The Palestine Chronicle writes the IRGC's aerospace top commander, Brigadier General Amir Haji Zadeh, said the U.S. does not dare to threaten Iran with a military attack. Washington sent correspondences to Iran three times in a single night, and the wording of all these correspondences contained requests and begging not to escalate regional tensions amid the ongoing Israeli aggression on the Gaza Strip. We are at the height of our power and we have prepared ourselves for any eventuality, he said. Now, IRGC conducts tactical drills in southern Iran. Tehran Times writes, Iranian authorities have made it clear time and again that Iran would never negotiate away its defense capabilities and will never hesitate to bolster its military might particularly its missile capacity, which is only intended for defense. That's it from me. Thank you so much for being with us and see you later. Independence in the defense industry means the less vulnerability possible in the face of strikes, shakes, sanctions and pressures from outside. It also awards a good chance for multilateral and bilateral international cooperation and technological transfers with cooperative countries. The exhibition didn't go without a practical display. The IRGC ground forces put on a tactical maneuver under the Chief of the Armed Forces General Staff, General Bagheri, 21st November. Participants, troops rather, were of the IRGC ground forces stationed in Kerman province where the maneuver was held, the mechanized 38th Zolfagar Brigade, the Sahib Zaman Brigade, the 65th Sa'ere or Lightning Missile and Artillery Group, and the 41st Sarullah Operational Army from the Imam Hussein headquarters. Mr. Bakhtiari said that when it comes to missiles, Iran has a lot to say. The missile domain was an area where we had no prior experience before the revolution, and we couldn't even buy missiles. Therefore, we had no experience. However, self-sufficiency in the missile domain was an area where we had no prior experience before the revolution. We couldn't even buy missiles, therefore we had no experience. However, self-sufficiency in the missile domain was established during the war years and concurrently the drone industry also came into play during that time. It progressed to a point where a country that used to be a significant importer of equipment is now an exporter. A few days ago, the deputy defense minister mentioned a very high figure. I can't recall the exact amount, where it was $1 billion or another figure. 
indicating our export of products. We not only manage to meet our own needs in various sectors, but also have reached the stage of exports. General Staff Chief Bagheri said, This maneuver was just a small display of strength by the armed forces. Today, Iran's armed forces are renowned for their formidability and our enemies are well aware of it. Dr. Bazargan told us that Iran has no choice but to stand on its own feet when it comes to defense. After 40 years, we have succeeded in doing so remarkably in missile and drone capabilities, reaching significant points in the region, acknowledged and claimed by many other countries as possessing high-level capabilities. Iranian drones, renowned for their deterrent value, are as crucial to us as it is for Saudi Arabia to acquire F-35s from the U.S. It's essential for our own deterrent capabilities in the region. Iran has made arms and equipments for ground, air and sea, from namely ballistic and cruise missiles to a variety of UAVs, marine and submarine vessels, cyber means, electronic warfare, smart weapons and artificial intelligence. Mr. Abdi said why Tehran was tilted towards investing in the missile section. Iran, due to the experience of the sacred defense, has a significant strategic foundation. One of the primary regions of asymmetric warfare in the world was the Iran-Iraq war, especially in the maritime arena. Our confrontation with the Americans in the region, utilizing silk war missiles with a range of up to 80 kilometers, posed serious threats to the U.S. fleets in the area. Since then, Iran's defensive strategy primarily focused on an asymmetric approach. One of the pillars of this asymmetric approach is missile capability. In circumstances where we were under armed sanctions during and after the sacred defense, particularly in the aerial domain, where we weren't provided with aircraft and lacked the ability to reconstruct our military aerial fleet. We moved towards reinforcing this aspect from another perspective, which was missile capability. It spent over 24 trillion two months last year. That's about $466 million. Its trick in recent years has been to put science-based companies to work. Today, 3,400 companies from among private sectors are working with the Ministry of Defense, as are 775 science-based companies. Three trillion two months or some 58 million and 200 thousand dollars has also been invested in various defense sections by public participation. Dr. Bazargan said what the Islamic Republic of Iran has achieved in the defense industry is unprecedented in the history of international relations. Now Ukraine has to plead daily to the US, Europe and NATO to sell them weapons against Russia. Today as the Gaza conflict erupts in Israel and Washington says we must aid Israel, which means we may reduce our support for Ukraine, Zelensky is heavily worried and afraid of what to do if U.S. support for Ukraine falters. If you possess military capabilities and technology, you not only won't worry about that day but become an exporter yourself. We are now an exporter in the military domain. A sanctioned country has reached a point where many countries, including our neighbors in the Middle East, demand to purchase missiles and drones from us. In my opinion, this is an exceptional capability unprecedented in the history of international relations where a country after 40 years of sanctions has reached the ability even to export weapons. CIPRI, or the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, testifies to the fact that Iran's arms imports were close to zero between 2018 and 2022. And this is not what the West desires, according to Mr. Abdi, a country that doesn't need Western military equipment, and even worse, it can export in this field. 
One of the reasons for the armed sanctions against Iran has been to maintain the profitability of Western weapons, merely presenting superficial reasons to preserve the military industrial complex of the US, Europe and Israel to safeguard their prices. However, even various countries, according to the statements from IRGC Air Force commander, as well as other defense officials, have requested arms purchases from Iran. European countries have also sought arms from Iran. We have received requests from Asia, Africa and Latin America. Russia, as revealed in the Ukrainian war, is also involved. Iran's military and defense capability has meant the ability to act as power balancing scales in West Asia and the world. In line with establishing safety and stability, it has fought and trained to fight terror groups such as Daesh. Hence, many countries have sought to expand their defense cooperation with this country. Iran's look is to expand a bilateral and multilateral defense diplomacy and to participate actively in taking regional and international security measures. Looking at how hegemonic powers have been toppled every time throughout history, the converging of independent countries of today will make way for the establishment of a fairer, multipolar world. But that has to be seen in actuality to make a program on it. Still, we will be back next week with another topic. In the meantime, take care.